Okay, you read the title. I'ma raid the granddaddy of all superhero cartoons. Superman! The Fleischer Superman. I'm currently writing a review for the entire series, and I didn't want to put reviews for each individual episode in there, so I'll be ranking them here. Have fun, I've never done a tier list before, so tell me how I'm doing, and like and subscribe while you're at it. Superman slash the Mad Scientist. A mad scientist invents a ray gun, rages havoc on the city, and kidnaps Lois Lane. This is the gold standard of all superhero fiction. I'd reckon it boosted the mad scientist trope just as much as Frankenstein did. Fuck Dr. Doofenshmirtz basically owes his entire existence to this dude. But besides that, it's really good looking. Just watch the way this ray goes up and melts down. It's so fluid, visceral, and awesomely Golden Age comics at the same time. I mean, if this was made today, all the riffers would probably comment on how dead these two would be from all the radiation this ought to produce. Here's not even something that you'd expect to be on the creator's minds, and that's weirdly liberating. By the way, this short lost best animated short subject that year to some hokey tug at your heartstrings, infinitesimally less influential Pluto short. Get off and stay off. So yeah, fuck you, Mike the Rat. S tier. <laughs> Mechanical Monsters A mad scientist created an army of robots to steal valuables for him. Lois Lane sneaks inside of one of the robots, prompting Superman to give chase. Very much like the last one, it's amazing. And in some ways, even more interesting and grand than the last one. I like the musical accompaniment that plays when these robots move. You can tell how this would eventually be taken to a whole new level by Miyazaki in Castle in the Sky. Also awesome Tommy Gun action. Though, if you pay close enough attention, the way this dude controls his robots with these four buttons and that dial makes absolutely no sense on several levels. I mean, neither does the scientist wearing a tuxedo, or demanding Lois Lane to tell him where the missing jewels are, while she's gagged, but, you know, it works for show. Also, also, I love how the jewels just get strewn about in the landscape somewhere, but in the end it says they're all recovered. Like the Indian greeting his dog, bitch how? Also, dickhead, you should know you opened the hatch while in mid-flight. What the fuck did you think would happen to the jewels? Like, <clears throat> C tier. For Cog. Billion Dollar Limited. A train carrying a billion dollars in gold destined for the US Mint is hijacked by a group of thieves. Can Superman stop this engine headed for disaster? Again, amazing gunplay, action, everything. Very train pilled also. Though, I do hate how in these shorts Lois Lane never gets to be the full-on hero. It's to be expected, but every time she does take action, it feels like it doesn't go far enough. There are some amazing animation tricks on display, however, and all over the journey of this express streamliner at night is lovingly rendered. As is the thieves transforming car, this bridge collapsing, Superman saving the train, this guard's shadow, you get my point. Though, I did shed a tear when the locomotive exploded. S for steam power. The Arctic Giant. A terrific monster frozen in ice is let loose upon the city after an unfortunate accident causes the ice to thaw. This is literally just Superman fights Godzilla. It's pretty goddamn awesome. Especially since Godzilla wouldn't be a thing yet for another decade or so. The size of the monster is pretty inconsistent, but they use it for great set pieces. I even heard that they referenced footage of the Tacoma Narrows bridge disaster for this bridge here. Very nice. I love the way this generator looks. This building looks comically stupid and out of place. Bruh. Also, Superman leaps here. It looks stupid, and we already saw Superman fly, so what the fuck happened here? B. For Big Lizard. The Bulleteers. A mysterious bullet-shaped vehicle destroys police headquarters. The entire city is baffled, and the pilots of this strange craft have high demands to make. 
Yeah, this one is pretty dumb for me too. It's a vehicle that can't transform into all this crazy shit. And somehow when it flies through buildings, those explode behind it for some reason. It's a cool idea, but clearly no one had any knowledge of ballistics. And the crew of this thing is pretty forgettable. For some reason, this episode is absurdly pretty too. Like, there's an awesome shot, angle, sequence, set piece, etc. I'm talking very slowly so I can fit more on screen. Around every corner. This episode is an artistic triumph. I love seeing the authorities fight this thing. And appropriately for this short, it's fast, it's punchy. The bullet his microphone is also bullet shaped. This one gets a B for bullet. The Magnetic Telescope! Bitch. An astrophysicist has invented a giant magnet to alter the trajectory of space rocks to study them up close. But after one falls to Earth with disastrous results, the scientist defies both sanity and the law, determined to prove the doubters wrong. This scientist is basically what I imagine Doc Morbius, I mean Mobius from Old World Blues was before he got turned into a brain tank. Your tampering with nature endangers thousands of lives. Yes, and even at the possible cost of those lives, I shall continue my experiment. I don't remember seeing this one at all. Again, it's really good and funky looking. Great scene compositions and amazing color schemes. This is what I imagine when I think of Technicolor in the 1940s. The shot shows off what this version of Superman is. Amazing, but not God. This scene in particular is great at showing off the strongman influence in Superman's design. And again, my giant dynamo fetish has been pleased. This one is a bit iffy in some aspects, but amazing in others. I think this should be more talked about when discussing these shorts. A tier. It's Morbin time. Electric Earthquake. A mad Native American scientist wants Manhattan Island returned to his people, so he sets off a series of earthquakes using a terrifying machine. Good episode. There is a lot of build up. The destruction scenes are very easily appreciable. I like the action a lot. Also, this city's just weird Oliver and company looking painted rendition of New York this time around. These shots never could quite make up their minds whether or not the city they take place in is actually New York or Metropolis, but I'm personally fine with it just being New York. The race aspect of the Native American doctor guy is also still rather tasteful, and his teapot looking ass lair is funny as shit. High C tier. Volcano! On a remote island in the Pacific, a volcano bound for eruption is threatening the very existence of a very peaceful town. Preparations are made to divert the flow of magma, to which Lois Lane and Clark Kent are sent into a report. But when the volcano erupts sooner than expected, things get hot. Can Superman stand up against the mighty forces of nature? Another short I don't remember seeing. This one stands out as an episode where Lois Lane actively hinders Kent from going up to the top of the volcano with her. So he has to be at the police station and sit on a bench. I think this gives us a great hint into the working relationship of Clark and Lois and the opinion she has of him. Unlike something like the Arctic Giant where Superman just grabs an entire mountain of dirt to plug a dam. Here Superman solves the issue by just executing the plan the people at the site already had just blowing up the backside of the volcano. And as a result in this one, I do believe the vulnerability of Superman. And it's a fun watch. Let me turn this around and make it an A. Krakatoa! Terror on the Midway. Lois Lane is tasked with documenting the arrival of the local circus. While the assignment seemed fairly peaceful, things get wild when a freak accident unleashes the dangerous animals on the Midway. Yeah, I don't think the short is very exciting. It has a lot of things going on, but it's just so much mindless action without much of a central thread. And the big bad gorilla being kind of uninteresting to see go down. But at least we get Superman fighting some lions and a Black Panther. And winning. Suck it, Marvel fans. D. Cool, so now we're at the end of the original 9 Fleischer Superman shorts. But let's keep this party going and talk about the rest of the shorts made by the reorganized and renamed Famous Studios. And oh yeah, these ones are quite, um... Now, nothing will interfere with Voyage to Tokyo. Yeah. Japoters! 
Japanese spies commandeer the largest bomber ever created, trying to fly it all the way from the eastern seaboard to Tokyo. I don't think this setup really fits Superman, and really does merit a longer runtime with a more down-to-earth character. I'd reckon it would've been just cooler to see a regular dude land a superplane than to see a super dude land a superplane. You know, it's all about ratio and shit. Again, Lois Lane could've been a good fit to solve the situation, but that's not what we get. Though seeing Superman land the plane in a busy street is a cool image. And let's talk about that thing. It's weird seeing a huge plane like this being a tail dragger, and it being both a bomber and a parasite fighter is odd. But since both are concepts so of their time, I kind of find myself liking the plane in a Crimson Skies, Sky Captain in the World of Tomorrow sort of way. Points deducted for bad Japanese stereotypes. C tier. <laughs> Showdown. This one's just a fake Superman with no powers and a gun runs around committing crimes, framing the real one. This is a swell racket, boss. And this Superman outfit, it works like a charm. Superman confronts the fake on a rooftop. Give me a chest, I'll come clean up, talk, honest up, talk. Oh, don't touch me! And it's cool, but since Superman is treated in these shorts like a phantom that just vanishes as soon as he appears, I can't help but think of this whole thing as a Batman adventure with an identity crisis. I think it's cute, but I also tend to forget it exists. C tier. What's the difference between you and me? I'm not wearing hockey pants. The 11th hour. Clark Kent and Lois Lane are interned at Yokohama where Superman takes the opportunity to sabotage the Japanese war effort. The local authorities give him an ultimatum. Stop what you're doing, or Lois Lane is dead. This entire short just has this really unpleasant propaganda short energy about it. That's just really out of character for Superman. I mean, that whole sabotage angle is just way too offensive for what has been a pretty defensive character otherwise. Of course this is happening in the shadow of Pearl Harbor, so that's somewhat understandable, but some of this stuff just makes you go like, wow, what kind of watchman shit is this? I have walked across the surface of the sun. I like the firing squad angle immensely though. It's very pulpy and feels like it's got a pair. I'm a huge fan of the way this episode looks too. It uses dark blues and grays really well, and I'm a bit sad the plot detracts from that for me. D tier. Who watches the Watchmen? Destruction Incorporated! The body of a Watchman at the Metropolis Munitions Plant has been dumped in the swamp, so Lois Lane and Clark Kent go undercover, soon finding themselves deep in a sinister plot to blow up the plant. Probably the best of the famous shorts. This one has a couple more comedic elements. Huh, sounds like there might be a story at the plant, Lois. Lois? Me name is Lois, not Lois. Chief whiz, everybody in Toy me name wrong. But also amazing action and setups all the way. There's like five potential pulp covers in here. They put Lois Lane in a torpedo. Need I say more? A tier. Skip it about and that up. The Mummy Strikes. A professor of Egyptology dies at the foot of the pharaoh's tomb at the local museum. His assistant is blamed for his murder and both Kent and Lane set off to prove her innocence. Again, as a pulp story come to life, I like it, but it deserved a longer runtime and a different protagonist. It's weird in all the good early 20th century fiction sort of ways and has a couple of twists and turns, but a good two and a half minutes is exposition about the mummy and it has little active character participation. As I said, it's cool to see more of Clark, but in the end, the mummy comes to life part and the professor dying part don't fit together, and neither does Superman punching his way out of this one. My pulp novel loving, slower paced weird fiction enjoying brain wants to rank this higher, but then I remember the mummies don't even strike until the last minute and a half. Incidentally, who told you I was at the museum? My mummy done told me. D. For dead guy. <laughs> Jungle Drums Deep in the jungles of Africa, a group of Nazis has taken control of a tribe of natives. When Lois Lane crash lands near their base, the Krauts get their pretzels in a twist. Can Superman save the intrepid reporter from those depraved savage- Okay, yeah, yeah, no. Ooh, oh boy, I got a lot to say about this one. This short suffers from all the problems I previously listed. 
It feels tailor-made for a distinctly different pulp protagonist. It's too short with way too much going on, with Nazis, tribals, plane crashes, a convoy, U-boats, and secret intelligence, and the situation being resolved absurdly quickly, in kind of a rocks fall and everybody dies sort of way. Almost literally in this case. But at least the rocks got American flags painted on them. To be honest, I'm not even sure how a jungle temple with tribals has anything to do with anything, but it's here. I'm pretty open to things like weird Nazi exploitation or distasteful World War II propaganda cartoons, but the problem here is that, unlike those, it's just more odd than fun. So all you're left with is just some stunning visuals and a lot of bad taste and missed potential. Safe crossing for the mighty mission. Praise the Lord and pass the ammunition and we'll all... F tier for Führer be mad. Agent Hitler, FBI. The Underground World. A scientist invites the Daily Planet to sponsor an expedition into an intricate system of caves in which the scientist's father had disappeared years ago. Through an accident, they uncover an ancient race of Hawkmen and have to make their escape from their strange captors. Steve Shives said it best, this does feel like an adaptation of an Edgar Rice Burroughs story or Weird Tales adventure that never existed. And unlike the last two shorts I've talked about, here the story's weird premise has a really good build up and little to no time wasted, with the Hawkmen being just the right balance of weird incredible as a threat to come back around and feel appropriate as a foe for Superman. They do another silhouetted savage dance, but this one feels more understandably eldritch, with the whole turning over Lannis into gold statues thing being really macabre. And I love how even Superman sounds totally weirded out by all of this. This is a job for Superman. The no one would ever believe this anyway ending makes this perfect. It's really a great story, Lois. But no one would ever believe it. B. For bird. Secret agent. Dangerous renegades steal Clark Kent's car in pursuit of a double agent carrying sensitive intelligence destined for Washington. But in doing so, they messed with the wrong guy. Good short. Again, it suffers from being a really cool pulp magazine film noir type setup in a series with the wrong protagonist. Clark Kent is knocked out for most of the episode, no they don't explain how, go set yourself down, and when he does come to, it's pretty exciting. But to me, the highlight is the action of the female spy and the German spies. It's very brisk and fun, but not necessarily deserving of being the last in the series. Still, it does well, it's interesting, it's thrilling, and offers some damn impressive shots for the 1940s. I would not have believed it if you told me the mechanism of this bridge wasn't done with the aid of CGI, for example. I really like how it renders these down-to-earth scenes too. These vehicles, the action, and the gunplay. It's just all wonderful. It's without a doubt the best World War II centered short. It's moody, got a great atmosphere, and again, feels like the G-Men type detective fiction Billion Dollar Limited echoed. C for So, that marks the end of my tier list. My takeaway looking at all of these is that even the shorts with flaws are without a doubt outstanding, at least visually. And that makes it really hard to make a definitive tier list, especially since these are just decadent little treats to just put on and appreciate. To me they strike the perfect balance between superhero bullshit and classic superhero fun. So if you got anything more to say, leave a comment. And while you're at it, don't forget to like and subscribe. These shorts are in a really weird spot legal-wise, where they're technically in the public domain, meaning they're fully available on YouTube, links in the description, but hardly any of these shorts are available in HD, so that's why some of the footage in this video has been ass. I hope you didn't mind and stay tuned for my formal review of the series next time. Have a good day.